Netscape Communications had the vision that the web needed a way to become more dynamic. Now they wanted animations, interaction, and other forms of small automation as part of the web of the future. Now the goal was to seek ways to expand the web, and that is exactly what gave birth to JavaScript. Hi everyone, this is Shantani from Edureka, and in today's session, we will see how you can learn JavaScript in 60 minutes. So now, before starting with today's session, let's have a quick look at the agenda. So now in today's session I will be answering some of the most commonly asked questions about JavaScript. So first we will start with what is JavaScript and then I'll tell you about what JavaScript can do and then we will move on and see where does the code run. And finally we will have a look at the different benefits of JavaScript. Moving on we will also see the setting up of the development environment or how the IDE is used here. And finally I will show you some of the fundamentals of JavaScript which will help you learn how to write any code in JavaScript. So let's get started. So what is JavaScript? Now JavaScript is basically a high level interpreted programming language which is used to make web pages more interactive. Now it all started in the year 1995 when Brent and I created JavaScript in a span of 10 days. Since then it has seen multiple versions updates and has grown to the next level. Now JavaScript is basically the language of the web. So it is used to make the web look alive by adding motion to it. Not to be more precise, it is a programming language that lets you implement complex and beautiful things or design on web pages. Now let's move on and see what can JavaScript do. So basically there are a lot of queries about why do we need JavaScript and what it can do when we have HTML and CSS already. But JavaScript as a language helps you build a website that will do a lot more than just gawk at you. Now currently we have hundreds of programming languages and every day new languages are being created. Now among these are few powerful languages that bring about big changes in the market. and javascript is definitely one of them now javascript has always been on the list of popular programming languages according to stack overflow for the 6th year in a row javascript has remained the most popular and commonly used programming language now moving on to what this programming language can actually do we see that javascript is mainly known for creating beautiful web pages and applications now an example of this is also the google maps So if you want to explore a specific map all you have to do is click and drag with the mouse. And what sort of language could do that? Of course is JavaScript. Now this language is also used in smartwatches. Now the popular smartwatch maker Pebble created pebble.js which is a small JavaScript framework that allows a developer to create an application for the Pebble line of watches in JavaScript. Not just that the most popular websites like Google, Facebook, Netflix, Amazon etc make use of JavaScript to build their websites. Now among things like mobile applications, digital art, web servers and server applications, JavaScript is also used to make games. A lot of developers are building small scale games and apps using JavaScript. Now a lot of people ask about where to run the JavaScript code. Now when it comes to running the javascript code you can use the console which is pretty simple because you can just type whatever you want to do with your code and you will see the output here itself or you can use any text editor for example i will be using the visual studio code and show you how you can write your code here and then how you can run it in your website and see how it works So you can work it both ways you can enter any data or input here and then you can go back to your console and check your output also if you have to check anything for your code you can check it inside the console itself Now JavaScript was originally designed to run only in browsers so every browser has what we call a JavaScript engine that can execute JavaScript code For example the JavaScript engines in Firefox and Chrome are SpiderMonkey and V8 So it's pretty easy for you when it comes to running JavaScript code online. Now JavaScript can build the backend for our web and mobile applications. So in a nutshell, JavaScript code can be run inside of a browser or in Node browsers and Node provide a runtime environment for our JavaScript code. 
So now that you know where the code runs, let's move on and have a look at the different benefits of JavaScript. Now there has to be a reason why so many developers love working on JavaScript. Well, there are several benefits of using this language, such as it's easy to learn and simple to implement. Now it is a weak type programming language, unlike the strong type programming languages like Java and C++, which have strict rules for coding. Now it's all about being fast in today's world and since JavaScript is mainly a client side programming language it is very fast because any code can run immediately instead of having to contact the server and wait for an answer. Not just that it has a rich set of frameworks like angular js react js which are used to build web applications and perform different tasks. Lastly it also builds interactive websites. Now we all get attracted to beautifully designed websites and JavaScript is the reason behind such attractive websites and applications. Now finally we will have a look at the setting up of the development environment or the IDE. Now there are different editors that you can use for writing your JavaScript code. So there's Visual Studio Code and then we have Sublime Text and then we have Atom as well. Now these are pretty famous and popular when it comes to working on any programming language. But when it comes to choosing the favorite one I would definitely opt for Visual Studio Code. So today I will be using the Visual Studio Code in order to show you all the examples and also explain the fundamentals of JavaScript. Now out of these my favorite is the Visual Studio Code. It's simple and easy to run your codes here. Now to download Visual Studio Code, you just have to type download Visual Studio Code and just go to the website code.visualstudio.com and get your version that is suitable for your system. Now it's a very simple, lightweight, cross platform and powerful editor. So if you don't have Visual Studio Code on your machine, go ahead and download it right away. Now in order to become a front end developer you should also be aware with HTML codes. So here we are going to use our HTML code as our host for the JavaScript. Now first thing first you must get this live server extension installed here before you try to run your JavaScript or HTML code here. So all you have to do is just go to the extensions and then search for live server. Now I have already installed this so you just have to install this before running any of these codes. So now that you are ready to learn how to code in JavaScript. Let's begin with the fundamentals. Now talking about the fundamentals the first thing is the variables in JavaScript. Now this particular programming language includes variables which basically holds the data value and it can be changed anytime. So it uses a reserved keyword var to declare a variable. Now all your variables must have a unique name. So now let's get back to our Visual Studio code. So this is my basic HTML file here. So here I have the HTML head and title and after that I have the script tag as well. So inside my body I have a head tag that says welcome to Edureka which means when I go to my website it will show me this particular head tag that is welcome to Edureka. Now it's always a good practice to keep your script tag at the end because the browser parses this file from top to bottom. So if you put the script element here in the head section you might have a lot of JavaScript code there. So your browser may get busy parsing and executing that JavaScript code and it won't be able to render the content of the page. Now almost always the code that we have in between the script elements needs to talk to the elements on this web page. For example, if we want to show or hide some elements, so by adding the code here at the end of the body section, we will be confident that all these elements are rendered by the browser. So here we use a variable to store data temporarily in a computer's memory. So we store our data somewhere and give that memory location and name and with this name we can read the data at the given location in the future. For example, think of the boxes that you use to organize your stuff. You put your stuff in various boxes and put a label on each of them so that you can find your stuff easily. Now a variable is basically like a box. So what we put inside the box is the value that we assign to a variable. 
Now that's the data and the label that we put on the box is the name of our variable. So let's see what's the code for declaring our variable here. Now in the old days we used to use the var keyword to declare a variable, but there are certain issues with that. So now we have started using the let keyword to declare a variable. So first we will use the let keyword here and then we have to declare a name for our variable. And your name should be something that is understandable or by looking at the code you can see that what you are trying to write. So here I have a code with the variable name. So I have given the name as edureka and then I'll just write console.log name. So now once I save this code and finally we will save this code with the extension .js. So this is our JavaScript file. Now in order to run this in your web browser you need an HTML file. So now this is where this file will come into existence. So here I have added one source which points to my JavaScript file. So here I have just given an extension as src equals to index one dot js which basically takes me to my JavaScript file. So now when I run this HTML file it will take me to the browser and you can see the heading here that is welcome to edureka. Now how do I get this console? So you just have to right click on your website and go to inspect and once this window has come up you can just go to console. Now inside console you can see that you have edureka mentioned here. Why because we have declared a variable with the name edureka. So our output was console.log name. So as soon as we run this code and go to our console you can see edureka. Now in case I change the name. For example, I'm just changing the name to learn JavaScript. Now make sure you give something unique because you cannot use the keywords that are there in JavaScript as your variable names or any sort of value. So here I have given the value for my variable as learn JavaScript. Now once I just save this and go back to my browser and once I refresh this you can see that it has been changed to learn JavaScript. Now previously it was edureka and now you can see that the name has changed to learn JavaScript because the value also has changed here. So now that you have seen how this variable works here. Let me tell you about certain rules that you need to follow while writing the name of your variable. Now the first rule is that it cannot be a keyword. That is it cannot be a reserved keyword in JavaScript. For example, let where these are all reserved keywords for JavaScript. So you cannot use them as your variable name. Next up is you should always have a meaningful name. So you must keep in mind that when you are giving a name to your variable, it must be meaningful and understandable while just seeing the name itself. Also, your name must not start with any number. So how odd would that be to just have a name that begins with a number like one edureka or two edureka. So it does not look good that way. So you must not have a variable name that starts with a number. Next up you must keep in mind that there should not be spaces or hyphen when it comes to the name of your JavaScript. For example I have written learn JavaScript here. I can also just write it like this in order to separate the two things but there should not be a hyphen or a space in between the two words. So you just have to write it together. Also the names here are definitely case sensitive. That means if I write learn JavaScript like this and then I change it to learn JavaScript with a capital L these two will be considered as different names because it is case sensitive. So now this was all about variables. Now let's move on and take a look at constants. Now by declaring a constant you basically assign a meaningful name to a value. So once a constant is declared it cannot be modified or assigned any other value. So now let's see how we can define a constant in JavaScript. So for example you want to describe your name in two different parts such as the first name and the last name. So suppose you have let first name is equals to edureka. And then you have last name as JavaScript. So here you would need a semicolon to separate the two things and declare it separately in such a manner 
but rather than doing this you can just use constants that makes your work easier. So now let's see how you can use the constant in your JavaScript code. So now let me just take the variable name as age. So for age we have a specific value suppose I'm giving the age as 23. Now when I type console.log age and then let me just save this one again. And now once I go back to my website and refresh it, you can see that it gives me the value 23. So here what I'm doing is I'm declaring a variable, but also I'm giving it a constant value. So now I cannot change the value of my age here. Now sometimes we don't want the value for our variable to change because otherwise it's going to create all kinds of bugs in our application. Now in those situations instead of a variable, we use a constant so that the value of a variable that is the name implies can change, but then the value will remain constant. Now in the next line I give age is equals to 21 and then now let me save this one and see what output do I get when I run this one. So let me just refresh it so you can see that I get an error here. Because we have already declared a constant value for age which is 23 and again we are changing the value to 21. So this will definitely give you an error that is the uncaught type error assignment to constant variable. So here your variable age is a constant. You cannot assign any other value to this variable anywhere. So thus it will show you an error. So basically we cannot reassign a constant. So once you have used constant you cannot change the value. So the best practice is to use var whenever you're planning to change the value next. So now that you know what are variables and what are constants you must be wondering what are the kind of values that we can assign to these variables. So now let's move ahead and have a look at the different data types that you can use. So now here we have two different types. So first we have the primitive or the value types and then we have the reference types. First we will have a look at the different primitive types. Now the data types are basically the type of data that can be used and manipulated in a program. So the different data types include the numbers, strings, boolean, undefined and null. So now talking about these data types, let's go back to our code and see what are string literals, what are numbers, what are booleans. So let's just type let name equals to edureka. Then we have another variable as age which is equals to suppose 23. Now for checking boolean, let's just give another variable as is approved is equals to true. So true and false are the ones that represent our boolean values. So this one is basically our string literal and this one is our number literal. This one we are using for boolean. Next up if we just write let first name and put a semicolon it automatically gives an undefined value to this one, but we can also write it as first name is equals to undefined. So there's basically no value assigned to this particular variable. Now the final one is the null value. So let me just give it as let date equals to null. So now let me just save this and then let me go back to my console again. Now once I refresh it. So basically I have not given any console here. So there's no output in my console, but then you can always check the type of your literals here. So what I have to do is just type type of and then if I want to check the type of my variable name so I can just give name and it shows me string. So here I have my name as edureka which is a string literal. So this is exactly the value that it is showing me here. That is the type of my name is string. Now let's check the type of age. So you can see that it shows number. So my age declares my number literal here in the same way when we type type of is approved. Suppose I write type of is approved. It will show me boolean. So you can see that inside the console itself you can find out the types of all of these variables. Now if I just want to check the type of my date. So I'll just write type of date 
and it shows an object because we do not have any value here we have a null value which is also considered to be an object in javascript now this is exactly where the reference type comes in so these were the different primitive types now we will have a look at objects so now that you have seen the primitive types in javascript we will have a look at the reference types in the reference type category we have the object array functions so now we will talk about these three different types so first let's talk about the object now object in javascript and other programming languages is like an object in real life so think of a person who has a name age address and so on so here i have given three attributes to my particular object suppose the girl is my object so i have three different attributes for this object that is name age and eye color now when we are dealing with multiple related variables we can put this inside our object for example we have two variables name and age here so what we can do is we can declare it as a property for our object so we can refer these two as elements or properties for our object this basically makes the code clear so now let's see how we can declare an object in javascript so let me just declare my variable as girl and inside girl i'll add properties for the girl so we have to begin with the curly braces so now inside the curly braces i will add the properties now the first property was name so let me just give the name as emily and then we have the age as 23 and then we also have another property as eye color so it's brown now we separate these properties with the help of a comma now finally we close this curly brace along with a semicolon now i will just use the console.log and find the output for my object which is the girl so now let me just save this one and let's go back to the console and see how it works now inside this i will add the properties for my object which is the girl so here you have to give the name of your first property and then use colon and then i'll just write the name as emily and we separate the properties with the help of a comma so the next property is age so i'll write it as 23 and then we need to close the curly braces along with a semicolon now i'll just type console.log and the name of my object that is girl and close it with a semicolon so here i have declared this variable or my object which is the girl and inside girl i have declared certain properties for the girl which is the name and the age now let me just save this one and go back to the console and see so you can see that once i run this code i'll get to see the properties for my object so it shows the name that is emily and age as 23 now suppose we want to change the name of this particular object what do we do so this is exactly where we use the dot notation so what we will do here is we will just give the name of our object which is girl dot name suppose i want to change the name here so i'll just give the name is equals to and i'll give another name here suppose i want to give the name as john and then add the semicolon now let me just save this one and see what happens to the output so now once we go to the console you can see that the name has been changed to john here now this is one approach there's another approach that you can change in order to change the name so what you can do is use the bracket notation now what is this bracket notation so we can just type girl and use the square brackets so inside the square brackets i'll give the name that is for the variable that i'm planning to change so my name now will be equal to suppose i want to give the name as sam so i just type sam and close it with a semicolon and then now let me save this one now once i go back to my console and see you can see that the name is changed from john to sam again so these were two different approaches that is the dot notation and the bracket notation through which you can also get into the property of your object and make any particular changes so now that you have learned how to declare an object 
Let's move on and see what are arrays and how you can declare arrays in JavaScript. Now the JavaScript array object is basically a global object that is used in the construction of arrays which are high level list like objects. So now in case you have a list of products in a shopping cart or list of colors or list of items that are used in order to make a painting. You will need to declare them with the help of arrays now declaring them just using variables would be hectic because you have to define all of them separately which might be a tedious task when your list is pretty longer. So now here comes arrays to your rescue. So let's see how the arrays work in JavaScript. So I'm just going to give the name as items and inside this I will declare my array here. For example, I have certain items inside my list. For example, I have color, then I have paintbrush, and then I have a plate. So suppose these are the items that are present in my list. So what I can do is close it with a semicolon and then now I'll just use the console.log and I'll put items here. Now let me just save this and go back to the console. And now once I refresh this you can see that it gives me the value and also what are the items in my list. So you can see that I have added three different items in my list that is colors paint brush and plate. So it gives me the value of the number of items inside my list and also what are those different items. So now once I click here you can see that it also gives me the index value for each one of these items. So in array the index value always starts from 0 and not from 1. So you can see that the index value for color is 0 and then for paint brush it is 1 and then finally for plate we have 2. So basically the index value goes from 0. So here we have 0 1 2 which means that the total length of the array is 3. So now if you want to display any particular item you can just use this index value so suppose I want to display the paintbrush so what I can do is use the square bracket give the value as 1 because the index is 0 1 2 so the index value for paintbrush is 1. So let me just save this one and now let's go back to the console. So you can see that the output it gives me is just paintbrush because I have just given the console log item value as 1. That means I only want to see the value that is there in the place of 1. That is the index value should be 1. Not just that you can also add something else in your list with the help of the index value. For example I can just give the name and specify the index value where I want to add something. Suppose I want to add another item so the index value will now be 3. Because I want to add it at the end of my list so I've just given the value as 3 and suppose I just want to add sprays so I'll just type sprays semicolon and then I'll just save this code so I'll add the item sprays here now let me just change this so that it shows me the value of all the items and let me save this one now once I go back to my console and reload this now you can see that the value of the items have changed from 3 to 4 and also another item has been added to my list and also you can see the index value so sprays come at the index value 3 that's exactly what I have added and that is exactly where the value has been added to. Now here you don't need to have a similar type of data that is if I want any number to be added here suppose I just want to add 100 so I can just add this number here and then save the code so you can see that in the output it will give the value as color paintbrush plate and 100 so it need not be a similar data type you can add different data types and also put it in the array itself now if I go back to my console and just type type of the name of my list that is I've given it as items you can see that it shows object so you can see that array is basically a type of object. We can also use the dot notation here and find out various properties. So you can see that you already have different properties that you can find out. So let's just find out the length of my list. So we can just type length and let me just save this one. Now once we go back 
and refresh this you can see that it gives me the length as 4. So basically with the help of dot notation you can also find out the values or different properties for your array. Now this was all about arrays so we have seen what are objects and what are arrays now it's time to move on and have a look at functions in JavaScript. So functions in JavaScript are divided into two different types. First we have the predefined functions and then we have certain user defined functions. So basically a function is a sub program designed to perform a particular task. Now functions are executed when they are called and values can be passed into functions and used within them. So now let's see how we can declare a function in JavaScript. So here I'll use the keyword as function for declaring any sort of function or the name that I'm going to provide to my function. So now let's see how we can declare a function. So I just want to view welcome to Edureka. So what I do is take the function keyword and suppose let me just type view and inside this I'll have to add the curly braces inside which I will have my console.log. So I want to print welcome to Edureka. So now once I close this now after the curly braces we have to call the function now. So my function name is view. So what I'll do is just call my function here and now let me just save this one. So now once I go to my console and then I run this code you can see that it shows me welcome to Edureka. So what actually happened is I have used a function view and I have inserted whatever I want to display and after that I have called my function here. So what happens is so inside console log whatever I have written is displayed in my output with the help of this particular function that has been called here. Now we can also add a parameter. So let me just add a parameter inside my function. So suppose I've added a parameter as name and here I'll concatenate that particular parameter. So let me just type name here. And then inside my function I will be typing whatever parameter I'm going to pass through it. So inside my function I'll just write learn JavaScript. So here I'm just passing a parameter inside my function. So here I'm giving the name as learn JavaScript. So let me just save this one and go back to the console. So once we run the code you can see that it shows welcome to Edureka learn JavaScript. So the value has been concatenated here. So you can see that there's a missing space here because in my code I haven't added the space. So in order to add the space so you just have to leave it blank and then add it again. And now once I save this code and go back to my console and run it again. Now you can see that there's a space after Edureka because here I have added a space and then concatenated the name. So now let's check for the value square. So now let's see how the function works in JavaScript. So here we have taken the keyword as function and we have given a name to our function. Suppose I want to find the square of a number. So I have taken the function name as square. So now inside the square I've given the parameter as number and then you have to open the curly braces inside which I'll return the value that I want as my output. So here I want the square of the number. So I've given the return value as number into number which will give me the square. Now you have to close the curly braces. Next up you will define the number now. So here suppose I want to find the square for number 2. So I have defined the number here as let number equals to square of 2. So I want to find out the square of the number 2 and then finally console.log number. Now once we go to our console you can see that it has given me the output as 4. Because the square of 2 is 4 and I have asked for the square of the number 2. So this is what the output is. So now that you know how functions work in JavaScript, let's move on and have a look at some conditional statements in JavaScript. Now what are conditional statements? When we use the word as if, else or we put certain conditions, that is when the conditional statement comes in JavaScript. So let's see how that works. So first let's have a look at the if statement. So suppose I'm declaring a variable here as number. So let number equals to let it be an undefined array here. Next up I will define the array or I will provide a set of numbers inside this particular array. 
So let me just define this and provide certain values. So let my array be one four one two five two. So these are the set of values that I have provided inside my variable. Next up here I will be using the if conditional statement. So now inside if we are basically supposed to provide any particular condition. So I have to find a condition here. Suppose I want to check if the number in position zero is equal to the number in position two. So this is the condition that I have provided here. So now after the condition I will just try to get the output. So I'll just give console dot log. So let me just say the answer would be yes. So in case the condition is satisfied it will give me an output as yes. So now let me just close this with a semicolon. So now this is where and how we are using our if conditional statement. So inside if we have just provided a condition for our variable that we are using. So our condition is that to check whether the number in the position zero is equal to the number in position two and in array as you remember the index always starts from zero. So we see that this is zero one two. So you can see that the numbers in position zero and two are same. So basically the output should be yes. So now let me just save this one and go back to our console and see what it shows. So I get the output as yes because the condition has been satisfied here. My if condition is satisfied and that is exactly where I've got the output as. So now let's see what is the if else condition. So it is pretty similar to the if condition. So it's pretty similar to the if condition just that there's one more condition that gets added here. Now in this case if both the numbers were not equal what we would have got. Suppose let me just change this value to three and now let me save and see what my output is. So you can see that we do not have any output because I haven't given any value for the next condition. That is what if these two numbers are not equal. So now this is where the else condition comes in. So I'll show you how you can add the else condition. So you just have to write else and then I will give another output here. So I will just type console dot log and then let it be no. So when the condition is not satisfied it comes out from this loop and goes inside the else condition where if the condition is not satisfied it will give me the output as no. So now let me just save this and go back to the console and see. Now you can see that the output is shown as no because here the condition is not satisfied. So it has come out of this particular condition and now it's checking the next condition. So here if this condition is not satisfied the output would be no. So you can use this if else condition a number of times and you can provide different conditions and also provide different outputs for different conditions that you are going to imply here. So now let's move on and have a look at loops. So in JavaScript we have the for loop the while loop and the do while loop. So first let's see how the while loop works. So for that first I have to declare a variable suppose I'm taking i equals to zero. I have to initialize the value of i and then give a condition. So here I'll use the loop. So I'll take while and give the condition as while i is less than five. That is the value of i is less than five. And then I'll give the output here. So it will be console dot log number is now I'll concatenate the value of i here. And then finally it's i plus plus. So now what happens here exactly is so I have initialized the value of i as zero and then I have given a loop which says that while i less than five we will be printing the number that is number is and the particular number and i plus plus that is the value will be incremented after each loop. So what happens here is the loop will start from zero and it will go on till four. So zero one two three four as soon as the value of i reaches five it will come out of this particular loop and the output will be only from zero to four because so now in order to check the while condition first I will initialize the value of i. So let me just take the initial value of i as zero and then here I'll use my loop. So suppose I'm giving a condition here that is i is less than five. And for the value of i less than 5, I will give an output which will be 
console dot log number is and then I'll concatenate the value of I here and then finally increment the value of I here. So now what exactly happens here is that so first I have initialized the value of I to be zero and then I have considered a condition that is I must be less than five. So I had to put it inside a loop. So I have taken the while loop here. So what we consider is while the I value is less than five our output will be number is and it will take the particular number. So it will count from the number zero and go on till four. Now as soon as the number reaches five it will come out of this particular loop. The I plus plus is for the increment that is from zero to four and as soon as it reaches five it will come out of this particular loop and then only the number zero to four will be visible in our output. So now let me just save this and see what happens. So let's go back to the console. So now you can see that the number is printed as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So as soon as the number reached 5, it has come out of this particular loop. So this is exactly how the while loop works. Now, in a similar manner, you can also use the for or the do while in order to insert loops in your JavaScript code. So in do while what happens is first you make the task happen that is you use the do keyword and put your output or whatever value you want and then later on you put the condition. So the condition is checked later whereas in while first you check the condition and based on that you provide the output. Okay so this was about the while loop in JavaScript. Now let's move ahead and see that how does the do while loop works in JavaScript and also how the do while is different from the while loop. So in case of do while loop what happens is the condition comes a little later. So first we declare the variable and here we take our do loop and inside the curly braces we give our output. So we have our output as number is and we concatenate the value of i and then we increment it as i plus plus. Now once we're out of this loop here we will be adding our while loop. So here we will be giving our condition. So suppose I'm giving the condition as i less than 6. So what happens is now it will take the values till 5 only. And what happens here is it will keep printing the value and come out of the loop and check for the value or the condition that I have provided inside the while loop. So now let me just save this one and go back to my console and refresh this and see. So here you can see that it's printing the value from 0 to 5. So previously we had given the condition as I should be less than 5. So it printed till the value 4. Now in my do while loop I have checked till I value less than 6. So here it has printed the value from 0 to 5. And as soon as the value is more than 5 or the value goes to 6 it comes out of the loop. So now let's move on to the for loop and see how the for loop works. So while using for loop you don't have to initialize the value here. So here we will begin with our for loop and inside the for loop there are three sections. In the first section you initialize the value for i. So here we are giving i equals to zero. And then the next section is the condition for the i value. So here I'm giving the condition as i value should be less than seven. And finally we will give the increment or decrement value. So I'm giving I plus plus here and finally we give our output that is console dot log number is and we concatenate the value of I here. Now instead of declaring your variables here you can do one more thing. So what you can do is inside your for loop itself you can just type let and then initialize the value in this manner as well. So now let me just save this one. And now let's go back to our console and see what is the output. So you can see that I have given my condition that i value should be less than 7. So what it prints here is the value from number 0 to number 6. So you can see that using the for loop is pretty easier compared to the other loops. You do not have much to worry or you do not have too many sections to be divided in this. You just have to use the for loop inside which you can initialize the value of your variable and also provide the condition and then give the increment or decrement value all together. And finally you just have to add the output that is whatever you want to print. So this was all about for loop and with this we come to the end of loops. 
So we have learnt about the while loop, do while loop and the for loop and how these three loops work in JavaScript and how easily you can define any variable and insert it into the loops. So for any sort of condition rather than writing the same thing twice or thrice or number of times what you can do is you can just put them inside the loops and let it just take place all at once. Now the final thing that we can discuss in JavaScript is the switch statement. So what is this switch statement? So if you have a number of cases that you are supposed to check inside any particular program so you can use the switch statement. So what happens is inside your switch statement you can add various cases and then go for the value that you want to execute. So let's see how the switch statement works in JavaScript. So for example, let me just take a variable as let game equal to let me just take any particular game such as cricket. It's World Cup season anyway. So let's take the value of my game as cricket. Now you just have to use the switch statement inside which I will just declare my variable game. So first we take the switch condition inside which I'll take the variable as game and inside the curly braces I will have my first case. So my first case I'm adding the game as football. So whenever the game football appears I will just give the output as console.log. I don't want to watch football. Now this is our output and then we give the break statement so that we can switch into our next case. So now if we consider another case and suppose here we have hockey and then we will give another output for hockey that is console.log and then we put console.log as I don't play hockey and then break the statement again. Now the next case would be cricket. So suppose I have cricket here. So I will just give the output here as console.log. I love cricket. Now in case I hadn't initialized any particular game here. So we always need a default value when it comes to switch statement. So here what we do is we take another default value and for our default value we give another console.log. So we just give match not found. So this is how we write a switch statement in JavaScript. Now let me just save this one and go back to my console and refresh this. Okay, so there's some error. Let's see. So yeah, we just had to put colons instead of semicolons. Now let me just save this one and now let's go back to our console and see. So you can see that the output is I love cricket. Because here I have already initialized the game to be cricket. So what I want to see is whenever the switch statement comes in and inside switch we have various cases. It will only take the output where I have the value for game as cricket. Now in case I change this value to football and now let me just save this one. Now let's go back to our console and refresh it and see. And it says I don't want to watch football because for my football uh, case I have given the output as I don't want to watch football. So this is exactly what is getting printed or this is what we get as the output. Now let me see let me just give foosball and we do not have foosball in any of these cases. So it should go to the default value but let's see what is the output here. So let me just save this one now and go back to the console and refresh it. Yes, so exactly the, we get the output as match not found because it goes to the default value. So in case any of these are not found or matched with the initialized value, it provides us with the default value here. So this was all about the switch statement in JavaScript. Now with this you know a lot more about the loops and switch statement and before that you have also learned about all the fundamentals such as the object arrays strings and how you can take the syntax and include everything inside your JavaScript code and also how you can get it inside your console and see what is the output with the help of your HTML file as well.
So now with all of these you have learnt about the variables objects functions arrays loops and conditional statements in JavaScript. Now this will help you create your own website. Now you can beautifully design your website with the help of JavaScript and also by playing around with these fundamentals of JavaScript. So this was all about today's session and I hope this video will help you learn the basics and the fundamentals of JavaScript and also it will give you a boost to get started with your JavaScript code and also create your own web pages. So stay tuned for more such videos and you can always go back and check out our playlist if you want to learn more about JavaScript. Also don't forget to share your opinion in the comment section below. Till then thank you and happy learning.